In this video we will be modeling the rim for the T9 Automo Blocks project. And the first thing you want to do is start a new part file, save it in your T9 folder, and you can call this part rim. So if you take a look over here in my browser, you can see the steps that I went through to create this part. Majority of it was done with the revolve. There's a lot in that sketch. So it is a cylindrical object and it is symmetrical. So that's why I chose to use the revolve tool. I also did an extrusion on the front to kind of give that little lip and make that part of the rim pop out. Then I created a sketch with one of those cutouts and I extrude and I extruded it but used a cut and then I did a circular pattern and finally I did a fillet. So um, you can see the steps to complete that and if you navigate to your OneNote binder you're going to see a half section view of the rim providing all the information you need and you'll want to make note that it is ABS plastic and again like I've always said just go ahead and try and take a look at all these dimensions, soak it in, and start figuring out a game plan in your head of how we want to go about doing this. So if we're going to make, if we're going to use the revolve, we're definitely going to be using information from this sketch. And this half section view really helps you out because you're going to make a sketch similar to that, but in the right view or right side view. So let's go ahead and just get going on that let's do a file new standard inch IPT and we're gonna start in the right side view and before I do that I should do a save as into my t9 automo blocks and you can go ahead and call it the rim so we'll call it rim and I'm gonna start a new sketch in the right side view which is your YZ plane and remember, whenever we're using a revolve, I'm going to start with a center line representing that axis that I'm going to revolve around. And before we actually draw that, let's try and visualize in our heads what that sketch is going to look like. So first off, if you take a look at the OneNote binder, we're going to be doing this sketch, but actually rotated 90 degrees so it's standing up to get this orientation. So imagine this but turned 90 degrees. And if I go to my other um, one that I already made, I sliced it in half. And if you could imagine, we're going to draw a center line here. And then what we're going to draw is this right here going up, over, down, back over, up, over, down and then back over. So that's what we're going to create right here in our sketch. So let's go ahead and just start with the center line from the origin going directly to the right. Now, what is the width of that minus, I don't want this little lip. So I want to know the distance from here to here, which is 0.57. So that's what I'm gonna start with. 0.57, enter, turn that into a center line. And then I'm just going to do a rough sketch, not worrying about the numbers of the uh, path that we just talked about to create the uh, portion of the rim. So I'm going to go line tool and I'm going to start somewhere just over here on the Y axis. Just make sure you're snapping to it. Left click, go straight across. Now I'm going to reference the end of that 0.57 line down on the bottom. And I'm going to click there. I'm going to go straight up. Again, I'm not worrying about numbers. I'm going to stop shy of the Y axis there. And then I'm going to go back up. And somewhere about there is fine. Now when I go back over, I want to reference that 0.57 again. And then I'm going to go up a little bit. Over, down a little bit here. Back over. A little bit shy of that line go up I'm going to reference that line over there on the right hand side right there left click go over to my y-axis left click come down and close it off so go ahead and create that sketch that you see something like that again don't worry about the numbers that's what we're gonna do now we're gonna start constraining it 
And before I actually start adding dimensions, the first constraint that I do want to add is I want to lock down this line that's on the Y axis and lock it down to my origin so it can't move. So I'm, to do that, I'm going to use a coincident constraint and I'm going to click on the line and I'm going to click on my zero, zero. So now that is locked down. And now we're going to start doing the width dimensions and there are four of them that we need to add. We need to add in the dimension for this line, the dimension from here to here, the dimension from here to here, and then finally this width dimension. So let's go ahead and do that. We know this one, so I'm going to click on that. That should be 0.57, so I'm just going to add that one in. Hit the check mark on that. Now let's do this one, which is from here to here. So let's go look and see where that information is at. Whoops, let's go to the OneNote binder. And that is this dimension right here. So that is going to be 0.05. So I'm going to add in that dimension from here to here, which is going to be 0 0.05. And then let's do, uh, let's do this one. This one is, well, that is this, and that's typical. So that means that this and this are the same. So that's 0 0.085. Enter on that. And then I got this dimension, which is from here to here, so that's 0.4. Oops, there we go. 0.4. Enter on that. And one, two, that should be all of our depth dimensions that we need. So all the other remaining dimensions are going to be all diameter dimensions. So that's this one, this one this one, this one, and this one. So let's go ahead and do this one first. So I'm going to click on that and then click my center line. And let's figure out what the diameter of that one is. Now that is the through hole. There, so there's that hole that's going all the way through this one, which is this circle right here. And that through hole has a diameter of 0.34. So I'm going to type in that 0.34. Then our next one, so I'm going to go and do this one. So I'm going to left click here, left click the center line. And this one can be a little bit hard to visualize, but if I go to the 3D model and I orbit in the back here, so we just drew this circle, which was the 0.34. Now we're drawing this one, which is uh, creating that cylindrical shape in the back here for the axle to slide into. So let's figure out how big that one is. So that one is provided down here because it's hidden in this top view. So you want to avoid dimensioning to hidden lines. So here they're providing a radius dimension. So we need to times that by 2, which is going to give you 0.44. So if I go back to here, this one should be 0.44. And then let's do the next one. So from the center line to here. And that one is this edge right here, which has a diameter of 1.14. All right, and then this one, whoops, from here to the center line. Oh, I got to click dimension there to there. And that one is going to be taken from here because that's the that's this inside lip right there and that's being provided down here now that's radius we need to times that by 2 and 0 0.59 times 2 is 1.18 and then our last one which is going to be from the center line to here Notice that when I added that dimension, it also locked down this one because both of those are on the same uh, axis, same plane. And that one is going to be, what is our point, f uh, no, whoops, what am I doing here? Uh, 
That one is the outside diameter, which is 1.24. So I'm going to go ahead and type that in 1.24. And now I have a fully constrained sketch. You can kind of take a look at that. Just double check yours. Make sure everything's good to go. Everything's uh, fully constrained. So now I can finish. I can revolve. It automatically recognizes it. So I'm going to say OK. And I know that does not look like the rim yet, but we're getting there. So the next thing we want to do is add in some material so we can create this part that's kind of curved out in the center of the rim so this part and that has a distance of 0 0.05 so that's how far we're going to extrude our next sketch 0 0.05 so I'm going to do a new sketch on this face and then I'm just going to project some geometry so I don't have to draw anything so I'm going to project geometry and I'm going to click on this circle and then I'm going to click on that circle Okay, and then I'm going to finish the sketch, and I'm going to extrude that 0 0.05. So now we have some material there to work with, so we can create our cutouts. So let's go look at some measurements for one of those cutouts. So the diameter of those five cutouts is a 0.5, and it's going through. Now, the question is, well, where do I draw the first one? Well, I'm going to draw this one first because the center of that is right on this uh, circle right, right here. So I'm going to go ahead and do a new 2D sketch on this face. So at this intersection right here between the X axis and this circle is the center of that circle. So I'm going to project geometry first of just that circle. So click that edge, and you'll see the yellow line. I'm going to hit Escape to get out of that. And then I'm going to go Circle Tool, and I'm going to snap right to that point right there. And I'm going to type in 0.5. And then I'm going to Trim. If I can find it, there we go, Trim. Trim that out. And then, so it still needs one dimension. So we need a location dimension. We need to lock the center of this down to the origin using a horizontal constraint. So I'm going to use horizontal. I'm going to click on the center of this, and I'm going to click on the origin. And now it's been locked down, and we can now go ahead and extrude cut. So I'm going to finish, extrude, cut, choose, uh, there we go. Just do a distance of all, say OK, and then now I got one of my cutouts. Now I can use the circular pattern, select my feature, click on rotation axis, click my circle. I only want five of them, so I can say OK, and now I got that. The last thing we need to do is the fillet, which has a radius of 0.125. So I'm going to go fill it, 0.125, and I'm going to click on those edges. Orbit around here. Say OK. And now I got the rim. So let's go ahead and add some materials. This is going to be ABS plastic. And for the actual color of it, I'm going to try and give it a kind of metal look. So I'm going to go aluminum, and let's go aluminum dark. So it still maintains the density and everything of ABS plastic, but it just has a, a color on it of aluminum. That's all we're doing with that. Then I'm going to go file, eye properties, update those eye properties, close that, and save it. I'm going to pan over. Window Shift S so you can screen clip into your binder. Get your progress points for that. And you are done with the rim.